any tournaments. They even lost like a smaller SCA tournament. So five seconds remaining. Big wild card, unknown factor. Yeah. So kind no one... of a dark or shadowy. How would you like to sum that up? Phoenix's what are you thinking? Avant garde. <laughs> <laughs> the avant garde. Yeah. You, you, Blitz, you happy with that? That's pretty funny. So the avant garde of Rupe. <laughs> and the Shanghai Major. I don't know how to say yeah, it. You most of I you have no it. idea what even it means. I don't want to call you off, but wait till they flash up that board. <laughs> I wrote Advant Guard. Five seconds. Is that, that even how you call guard? You call guard in any uh, world. G U R. G U A R D. But even that's not the same as this one. Hey, hey. And then there's hey. an E at the end. There's an E at the end. Team in, in this version of guard. Oh, that's just very confusing. They should. <laughs> Say fucking consistent. something, something old English, <laughs> stupid English language. Okay, back to secret. <laughs> Phoenix's turn. Thing to that's pick. gonna. Let's just try to confuse James. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give me difficult. hard words. I purpose. think that secret will win because Q is a really explosive player. Write it down. <laughs> oh God, I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I, I just want to see. I just want to see if James will just be like, yeah, yeah, secret Q O. Uh huh. Oh wait, I was actually gonna write. It. <laughs> <laughs> See, I knew it would have worked. He's just Why did you guys act that way? Right. Not coming back to the panel ever again. <laughs> Andy, help me out here. Uh, something for secret. I think that they're actually like this tournament, especially they have to be driven, right? It's kind of what Will said. They they were a team that is kind of like not necessarily all star, but they had a really hot streak, and then they had a rut. So I feel like after winning the first opening match against CVEC, that puts them, I would say. High morale. You know, they got momentum. They're on the up. Yeah, yeah, they're on the upswing, which I think is really good early on in the tournament. So we put, we put momentum. Well, yeah. That's harder. I'll just put up. Remaining. I don't think you can spell momentum, actually. <laughs> hey, hey. Damn. That's how it goes. Are you sure you spelled um, up correctly? Mo. How, is, is it is moment, moment? Sound it out, James. Come on. <laughs> you can do this. M O M E. <laughs> I want to go M, but that seems. I, I mean, there's already at least two in there. I think you might be going a little bit too fast. And I'm going to finish it off with an extra M. Why not? We got yeah. four M's. Brilliant. <laughs> no mem. Okay, no I, I know that was perfectly Reserve wrong. I did that. Back. All right. Uh, sure. All right. I'm enjoying it. They got momen momentum. 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 Pretty All right. So we're into the drafts now. We've got two big reasons. We can revisit this after game one. And I can can't add, wait for us and to you can, <laughs> And you can add more uh, if you want. Try and can we just come up words. with really long words that are hard to James James to spell? Like, well, I'm about to spell. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Zexia was fine when I was at school. I had someone who could like take my notes and I like, seemed to send extra time in the uh, exam. You're not going to get any pity right, from I'm not going to get 15% time. Okay, extra time MVP here. just got Earth Spirit. <clears throat> this is yeah. true. But it's because the bands are pretty much tailored to secret. They just banned two puppy heroes in the first two. They saw the Enigma earlier, they're like, we don't want to deal with that. Because of that, you let other high tier heroes through, so... Team Secret's opening has been pretty static, I think, uh, ever since the first series that I saw. They often like to pick the Invoker first to counter any Void pick, because obviously the synergy is there with Chronosphere. Or just counter anything. Yeah, well, yeah, Invoker, kind of, kind of decent hero, but... Seems like Void was really favored, and then has already kind of stopped being picked in the first two. I don't think that's the case at all. It's just that every single game, C deck chose it first. Yeah, that's that. Okay, yeah, that's a good they point. Took it five times Come to think of it, yeah, <laughs> it's just CDC thing all the time. I'm just waiting for one team to be like, no, nope, we'll ban faces. It was like that hero is not falling off. It's just you only got to see one team play. Yeah. <laughs> Although Eho maybe doesn't want to play it again. I'll go off it up. I don't know if uh, in the MVP Phoenix series for home did they was oh. Who? My other king? Void? Void, yeah. Uh, yes. Took my E home, and they mega lost with it. Yeah, they they mega lost. It they was, to do it was 11 Time pretty much died the same amount of time. As his name, okay. Not great. Still picked Andy. Airing <laughs> <laughs> decreases six. I don't think it's the hero, though. I, I just think that E home came in a little bit cold and MVP. Remaining. Five seconds remaining. Profit. What's the lion ban about? <sighs> Weird one. Phoenix's. Although those make sense to me. Lion one is just like why lion. 
Is it good for Morphling? Is it like good for something they want to pick? Ember was already banned out. I mean, it kind of has to be that, right? It has to be tailored towards something like core oriented that they want to take a little bit later on in the draft. But I mean, Terrorblade? Actually, that's it. Terrorblade's a hero who hasn't been picked yet, right? Secret. I mean, I'm not saying they can't pick. I'm just saying it hasn't been picked yet. But that's like Lion's not that popular. He was picked in the last series, but he's the only one that doesn't really remaining. synergize well against is the, with MVP's lineup or against Secret's lineup. That's Reserve the one I, I think it's very, very odd. The it's going to be such a hard uh, mid lane or Team Secret with both yeah. Nature Spirit and the Nature's Prophet roaming. You get some sort of aggressive mid, whether it's like a lane dominator like Death Prophet or a more kill oriented hero like, um, like Puck. It's going to be a, a time. Yeah. If they're really scared, they can just run like a Bane or something. Or well, they could also just go Bane. aggro. I mean, they've only had one hero, and I think then just fine if you want to go aggro lane. Saw teams do that earlier as well. I think Seeker should... Nature's Prophet, and it messes with Spirit a lot. Dilation. Seeker's Prophet. I don't think you want him to just get going. You want a way to kind of catch him out. VP Phoenix, I think they took Destructor as well against... Yes. It's always been their hero, though. I remember, like, even when March was on the team. They liked the style that it gives them. Philosophy was always, we're gonna run at you non-stop, run out of steam, well, then we probably lost, but <laughs> at least have a good time. I like this choice by Team Secret. I, th I agree with you that they should go for the Faceless Void, but it's a free pick at this point in time. Like, MVB Phoenix can't really fit it into their own. No, they can't. So they can get Gyro Faceless Void as a combination. That These are actually some of the best heroes you can run. With um, with faceless void. MVP are bringing out some different heroes we've seen today. Do you like it or? <laughs> what is what is what is in avant garde? What is that? He's like, I guess hipster if you want to say like in in layman's terms, more like cutting edge. Ten seconds. Not afraid to try new like stuff. You're, yeah, you're you're the one to, um, defining the trend. Okay. Five seconds. They don't care about eight. what's what's hip. Do whatever. Word. Word. Reserve time. The PL PL is strange. First, firstly, the illusion based heroes are generally just not good for some vogue because they all get all illusions. You get they all die. They all get disarmed. You can't buy BKB for them. So on and so forth. But you can like, you can doppelganger out of the deafening now, can't you? The nerf, so like you can still yeah. cast spells in it, so it's like not as bad. But still, illusions are just generally not. Yeah, not they that they great. can still get wrecked very um, quickly. And it's also for gyro, which is I, I would just say already an overabundance of AOE to deal with the phantom lancer. But it is a hero that can be played in a very aggressive strategy. It's also decent at uh, pushing towers down very early, which they like clearly with the nature problem. Wouldn't you say though that it kind of requires damage and lockdown for PL? Like old PL I would say that just damage or just lockdown was enough, but I feel at the rate that he spawns illusions now, and the inability of Team Secrets to, to lock him down for long periods of time, Night Stalker is obviously going to help with that. But I, I feel like it's still okay, especially given the style that they like, which is more go for the pick, don't necessarily go for like the, the five man. Mm -hmm. I think right now Phoenix is going to have to slow down the simple picker. A lot of it comes down to him if the PL can get free farm. Five seconds remaining. You definitely need one of those kind of tempo controllers, but Huck, you can't really run it against uh, Night Stalker, I Reserve think. Time. A bit too hard. OD's still okay here. Just like BKB would destroy. Team I don't think there's um, enough overwhelming like fight and save for like a death farm or something like that. So. I don't think DP's good though on... What are they? They're playing Dire, right? Yeah. Playing Dire side plus the... Uh, Lineup they have. Ten oh. seconds remaining. I actually like, think DP is pretty. They can just roll all remaining. secret towers from very early on, and they have like heroes that can kind of protect with an Earth Spirit and Disruptor. Yeah, they actually have super access support. It's actually good. Then I you think need, that you need like one right. support that uh, defends really well though, or keeps the DP alive. Think, yeah, and they, exactly. They don't have a, a saving hero. They don't have an aura. I guess if she gets swapped and she's dead. Yeah, yeah. I don't, yeah. That's never I don't good. really like the DP. <laughs> like, the, the PL and Nature's Prophet are enough to really make sure that DP overwhelmingly wins fight. There's like so many things going against it. I don't have a hero that can save Dire Side. Doesn't really super fit Nature you line up. I guess you can make a case because it beats Invoke Ed. I don't know if that's a case to make for. I think you almost have to disregard Ten the Night Stalker at this point in time and have to pick up one of those tempo controllers like Lena or Puck. 
even though it's not good versus Night Stalker. You have to make sure that you trans, you win your laning phase in the mid, and you take down that Evoker, and you transition that into more control. Ooh, the mid Juggernaut. Turn to pick. I've seen this a couple times versus Invokers. It's one of the few melee heroes that can actually deal with that match. It's a uh, Yell mid, Miracle mid, really. The uh, E Miracle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mid peels pretty good. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it does. It can't die. Ten seconds. See the vent coming in. You always dodge the stun. Almost just Beast fade. Master. Oh, oh, that's a hero we haven't seen yet. Or has he been? I don't uh, think he has. No. And uh, Misery's going to be on it, so looking for the offlane. So yeah, there we have our draft, and uh, we're going to get ready to go into uh, match number one of the upper bracket game. <laughs> Obviously now, between Secret and MVP. Um, are you guys still happy with your original selections after seeing the first draft? And of course, you know, uh, we've got MVP that want a better life slash private bathrooms. <laughs> Was it bedrooms that you wanted them to have? Bathroom. They want, they want private bathrooms. Man, that's such a sad thing. I wish I had <laughs> put that up there now. The way you phrase it, they want a better life. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure well, they're happy enough. <laughs> Guys, this is it. Um, but uh, couch number two, you still happy with... Uh, I like Seeger. I'm, I'm feeling like comfortable with Seeger, yeah. I'm yeah. feeling pretty good about it. Any particular reason why? Or just a gut Five feeling, Andy? Remaining. Yep. Feeling. Okay. Yep. I think the draft is really strong. I think the Beastmaster last pick was um, kind of what they needed. They needed solid lockdown versus Juggernaut and EL. I think everything before that um, is kind of patch dependent heroes you need. Okay, and uh, very quickly, Blitz, this is your uh, MVP. Um, why are they going to win in one word? Avant Dark. <laughs> <laughs> Into the game with Toby and Cinderus. Good luck to both teams. Thank you very much. Yes, it's time to get underway. Team Seeker going up against MVP. Who would have actually thought we'd be sitting here going, Hey, MVP, they 2 0 at E home. Not me. <laughs> I don't think most of the world thought that. I was definitely, uh, a lot of people going into the tournament actually considered E home the favorites to win the whole thing, but so far the group stage has proven to be, uh, quite difficult for them. Of course, they will be meeting the winner of this matchup. Or sorry, the loser, the loser of this matchup, matchup rather, yep. uh, to fight for second place. But as uh, MVP versus Secret, I think the very difficult draft for me to call actually. Both teams have some great strengths. The main thing I noted was that MVP chose to not go for their Enchantress, that they actually had an option to do in second phase, but rather sold for a disruptor. So I wonder mm -hmm. what was the reasoning behind that. But not just that too, it's the fact they then went into the Juggernaut, which gives very unusual lane hello bottom lane. Uh, already Debu trying to clear a little bit of space. Weeha coming in a little too close. And Febby, oh, he's, he's actually going to fill up Glimpse. He's going to bring Weeha back, and they may have enough damage. He's right on top of the rune spot, and there it is. First blood goes away of MVP. QO to spill it. And that's a nice start to the PL, who's going to head in towards that mid lane. Yeah, that's perfect. When, when you saw that Juggernaut last pick, you are thinking, okay, it has to be a Jugger or a PL mid. And uh, PL probably the... Ended it for standing up against Invoker very early on. You had a couple, couple gangers you can just cold snap and just generally get away um, in case of any rotation. So, probably getting a pretty fast bottle because he got that first blood and the rune, I believe. Yeah, he got so much for that. So, talk for him. And of course, it also delays up the Invoker. Like, we are taking so long to run back to the mid that with the puppy, he's almost gained like half of the creep wave worth of experience just by sitting here in the lane, waiting for his mid to return. And Invoker being behind a PL at the start. Oh. He's full level behind. All the way. I don't want that. But... Yeah. Especially oh, yeah. another kill. You don't want to see that happening either. What, what does Weehar even do here? So you, you're... Okay, he buys up a fresh Dao. But the Courier is already busy. The Courier is already walking out with the Stout Shield so Puffy can Iron Talon jungle this Night Stalker. 
Yeah, this has become a fairly popular way of playing the Night Stalker, just playing at position 4 with the Iron Talon jungles. Uh, the problem is it gives a lot of space to MVP. When when you see that there's a Night Stalker jungle like that, the prop will feel very confident bottom one. Misery, two. top lane. Uh, they're gonna actually trap him up in a spinning go for it, and with the glimpse back, yeah, Misery's in a world of hurt. He goes up to the tree, starts to TP out, oh, and they nice. won't reach him in time. Misery, nicely played. Nice escape. Very, very good. Now, at the same time, they put quite a bit of pressure on Kyo mid. He's fairly low on health. We has recovered a bit, I guess you'd say. He's still behind on CS and a little bit on actually a lot on experience. Never mind that. I don't think he's recovered <laughs> enough. Especially now the Kyo is running a bottle. They're really pressuring. This is the problem when you run an Ice Doctor like this is that the first four minutes you just have innate weakness in your lineup. You're... You're giving the offlaner space in the profit. Actually, now Puppy with a very good rotation could be. Here, but no, they're not going to go for it. No. And in addition to that, of course, Weeha in the mid lane will be uh, abused quite a bit here by Uwu's Earth. I like the build too on QR. Like, he, he knows exactly how he wants to play this with the Earth Spirit. Like, going for the two, now he actually has the one point up in Doppelganger. Oh, with a Phantom Rush that just closed this in so quickly. Weeha, there's no way to escape that. The Ice Wall went up out of pure optimism. And you could also see Ferev, he was actually starting his keep help. Even though it really wasn't necessary at the end of the day. So Weeha, he's 0 for 2 on this Invoker. I gotta need to do something about this mid lane. You really don't want... Invoker is one of those heroes that you can recover on, but if you get stumped this hard in the coming lane, top, it's very difficult to... The Rev TP is in. They uh, still have the Glimpse, and it's already at level 2, but they put the wall up to start with. The Misery can't just TP himself out this one. So MVP... And they start their series up against Ehome with severe domination, and now Misery, all he can do is just deny his life, at least the uh, direct kill to MP. And this seems to be starting off very similar to their series against Ehome. Kills all across the map, and then pressure being applied. Earth Spirit Prophet is incredible as a first phase opener for them. I completely agree with that pickup after the first pick from Secret, because it just... You can just go anywhere. Just keep just going. going immediately on Misery again here. They still have the glimpse. They don't even need to use it yet. Just, yeah, they won't need to use it at all. Oh, so you've managed to get the mid laner and the off laner of Team Secret. Zero two. So two deaths for both of these heroes early on. Perez already up at level three. So the level two, level two trains aren't fully enough to get rid of this top tower. But then again, you could just drop the healing water of MP. Like, they can just keep pressure going, and I think they see a new target too. Nighttime strikes, and Puppy tries to already attack and QO. Okay, he doesn't have enough help, not quick enough at least. They started their rotations and have already started up the wards around the top tower. MVP supports. Who's actually in the awkward position here? Puppy, he ran into it. He came underneath the wards, the rev TP's forward. He took a three and able to go for the block as Puppy tries to just juke them out, but because you can't juke out an Earth Spirit. They get another kill, they ping out the fact that Misery's come back up to this top lane. And MVP, Misery actually turns to fight. They have Glimpse, but Bebby decides not to use it. When Puppy chose to run up the hill there, I think... Well, first of all, he wasn't expecting the supports to be in that position. But secondly, it, it looked a little weird, because they, they know there's many heroes in the neighborhood, and there was no one on Secret ready to TP up there. Gyro isn't up yet. Invoker definitely can't leave his lane right now. So... That's kind of an optimistic play, like high risk, but what's your actual reward of going up there? You can't really claim anything apart from a little bit of information and costing his life there. Great start for MVP here. This is, yeah, they're showing that the thing against Ehome was not a fluke. 3k lead minute <laughs> 5. Secret's so, got a, some recovering to do here. Well, they do have one big thing that's working for them, and that's Eternal Envy. Safe lane farm, not really pressured, obviously, for Rev spent a lot of time out of that bot lane. Of course, while I say that, he is level 4 and now is soaking up the experience on the bottom lane. And you've already taken out the tier 1 tower on the top. So the ability to rotate for MVP becomes more real. Like, even Febby. Like, if you're worried about, like, a slow level up or disrupt, and he had that level 2 glimpse very, very early on. So now even, like, presence in the lane is difficult for Team Secret. Knowing Disrupt, it could be staring down the barrel of having a Static Storm soon. The PL is now at level 7, and he's sitting with a with a regeneration rune. So, QO has kind of got the world as his oyster. Even the Juggernaut with Faith Boots and Omni Slash, now, now he has level 6. PL is such a difficult kill for the Secret lineup. The only thing they have against him is Night Stalker Silence, but actually, wait, they don't have that. They haven't killed it, so... They can kill him until the Beastmaster gets ours, and Kuro will just be able to do this, and he's fine. Yep. We're getting her away. There's no serious lockdown. The only real stun that they have for now is actually Magic Missile. He just 
dodge that easily. How can you buy space then for misery? Because misery then, like, you look look at more stuns, you look for the Beastmaster Roll, right? Yeah, I just, I think that's the problem with Secret Strap right now, is that it's extremely greedy by nature. Um, they, I think the hero you have to use to create the space might be the Gyrocopter to get him involved in a couple of kills with the cooldown now that he's level 6. Maybe you do a smoke rotation. Uh, Night Stalker's first night time is running out and Puppy isn't anywhere near close to level 6, so um, he won't be having darkness either. And at daytime it's just way harder for them than it is to be right now. So, yeah, where does Misery get it? Good question. He's level 5 right now, I guess this top wave will be pushing in slowly from MP, so he'll get a little bit there. Probably not the early gun he was looking for. I'm watching this Earth Spirit in the bottom lane, like, for me, I would have thought like the Earth Spirit would like be heading in towards a different position, but I suppose at this point, we are as well as Misery are playing very defensive just because of what's happened early on. Uh, so he looks for a kill on bottom, but normally it's the Prophet that TPs in to help the Earth Spirit wherever he's initiating. <laughs> but in this case, he's just waiting on the bottom lane. That's what I'm doing. It's like he's bored. He just denied two of his treants with half health. <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, I can't go CS right now. Might as well just kill some treants while I wait. Uh, but yeah, anyway. Definitely, they're just ex they're extending their lead, they're 4k ahead now, just controlling the map very well. Fabi that we talked about, it's going to be a very fast level 6 disruptor, he's 200 experience away. Duo, very confidently strutting up this mid lane, knowing he has MP coming in from the side, and if there's no ghost walk available, there is oh. no, but, and they actually have no detection, already invoked it. We had turned for a moment, it. there you go. He's and in. that's enough, that's disintimidation just to cure them, the mid tier bottom lane. and they're going bottom too. Yeah, Pala died in this game as well, they just thought they could do it with the draw, eternal MP, that can miss that rock barrage. It's actually able to get close enough with the flat cannon and the cooldown. It ends up being a one for one trade off at this point, Secret will take anything, gets him on the board, the void's already used, for grab the rocket, oh, doesn't reach him in time, but the sun's strike! Barely missing, it had a crack, but a bottom lane eternal MP is being attacked down, QO will arrive, and he takes out He's Eternal Envy. Yet. Oh, can he actually take out Puppy too? Oh, of course he can. He's a PL. He doesn't have his Phantom, his Phantom Dash off cooldown just yet. And there we go. Puppy lands one second. There goes the land. And there goes your Puppy. He's kind of blocking himself. Move it out. Look at that all time you crack up. I'm not Misery getting stunned at the last moment by Dabu. He couldn't TP out. At least the upside is he's got level 7. The downside is he's dead. Gone. Secret definitely have to get together on this in this next time. If they don't accomplish anything in the next night, they're gonna lose Roshan and they're gonna lose their tier ones. That's such a big lead now that you could look at Secret Line and be like, they actually have a pretty they're good gonna team kill Envy. Right? Oh, yeah. they went. Uh, uh, Fabi, you gonna glimpse him back in oh, the old No, the wall position was a little off from Fabi. Eternal Envy still walked back into the storm and took the damage. Normal. Iron Tail on Jar? That is probably as normal as the Helm of the Dominator over on... No, on Bristle? Bristle. Hey. On Bristle. <laughs> well, it's the, the E efficiency, but... Well, is, is it really that efficient? What I was like, well, I mean, the extra damage, even though he's a ranged hero, it's still kind of nice for clearing out. It's just, again, it's, it's so greedy. They already have an Iron Talon on Puppy, so right now, if you want to look at it that way, it's a thousand gold, these two Iron Talons combined, that yield almost nothing in fights, right? So their net worth lead, effectively, is even even bigger for MVP. They're closing in on TK, 10k at this rate. Right. You can understand it though, like, why Puppy got a first space in the mid. He managed to get, like, a couple of CS. And, like, the rotation of the jungle with a 9 talent just made sense for a Night Stalker. But, yeah, running it with a Gyrocopter, that's definitely a new one to add to the books. TP away from bottom. You can, you can tell that it's high. Highlight I said. They actually had the Wrath of Nature help out QO. He's gonna get Magic Missile, but he's also got Lance back off cooldown, which makes this just a little too easy to find the kill. At the same time, up on top, Forever just TPs away from Eternal Envy, who has done his first uh, lane rotation of the game. That rotation is no, not the rotation secret we're hoping for, but they're making the right read. They can't fight for this bottom two. Daytime, the enemy is really far ahead. They're not in a position to do anything about it, so. They're gonna try to maximize the and just find whatever farm they can while they give away map control. Not good, but it's probably the best they can do. Um, like, it's very rare that you say 10 minutes in that the game has slipped from their hands. For a team, a team like Secret, this is very, very rare. But mm -hmm. they have just been absolutely ridiculously outplayed in the early game by this MVP squad. Just The nice thing about this lineup when you look at it is that the initiation range is obviously ridiculous, right? They have Earth Spirit and Prophet. 
And then if the enemy team reinforces, they have glimpse. So they can always double outnumber. And they will be outnumber the high heels. Yeah, they're gonna destroy the high. And Penalty is around here and he is gonna kill off the boot. A nice cooldown position. MP, he's got the Omni Smash available to swap out from Pylai Die, making it so Fabi cannot escape. And that's a two for one trade off. You lost your Earth Spirit as well as the Disruptor. Probably the bigger thing was the fact that the Ancients. Oh no, they didn't finish it. They didn't finish up the Ancients. Colonel Envy moved off that just a little bit too early. Oh, now he might die as well. He's hanging around mid. He does have a TP. But yeah, they're going to see him mid now. He was on the uh, With the lands forward, Envy will take too much damage before that TP will complete, especially with the Ancient Prophet coming in to help. MVP walk up this hill and they see just how low that Ancient stack is too. That's just too that's too too much easy money. And okay, they're not even looking for that. They're looking for objective base. It's gonna be Roshan now for them. It's just a matter of time. What I was expecting, the see can't really fight, so MVP should just be able to go there as fast. Oh, they found misery even more here than he's done. Yep. Managed to get the kick. Misery's gonna go down, so no misery for 34 seconds, which means you know there's you know at least so there's no hawk you know, over the pit. Even if the Radiant Observer was there, can Secret even contest it? I feel like they... They have to, but they can't. It's a, it's a 4 and 5, and Puffy has half health and no mana, so... And if it doesn't, exactly. it's three on five. If it doesn't work, you lose everybody, because Disruptor will just keep dragging everyone back in again. I have to give this one away. I really don't want to. It's just... Getting worse and worse. At least it's plateaued a little bit in the last two minutes, but now it's gonna get even worse. And... Hmm. I'm just trying to think of openings for Secret. I can't remember them using a smoke yet this game. Maybe they've used one, and they tried that fake play mid where they got Invoker caught out and got the gyro play. Perhaps that's what they need to look for. Just try to get as many baits set up as possible and just sacrifice Weeha a couple of times to get the other hero farm. Play is definitely not working. Well, the only other one which is really going to have an impact if you get him farm. If it's not Weeha, it's got to be Envy. It's got to be the Gyrocopter, but Envy's gone for this, like, like, it's almost the ultimate greed build. Like, we had the stat before, this is only the second Iron Talon ever on a Gyrocopter in a competitive match. And now he's followed it up with the Helm of the Dominator build, as well as the Ring of Aquila. Like, the ability to get into something like a BKB or a big damage dealing item is kind of off. And also, so was that smart from MVP. <laughs> It's a little bit weird. Um, they still do have the two support smoke and they're rotating the This is actually very smart because what they're going to expect now is that okay, these two heroes are hitting the tower bottom, the other heroes will be on backup for them. But they're actually making two plays at the same time. Fortunately for them, this observer ward will see the PL elude and this should give it away. Oh, but it's another free tower for MVP. Mm -hmm. Perez is going to put the face, get his. Is that Orchid? Not or yet. But he's pretty damn close. He's close to Orchid drum phase in it. <laughs> Alright. He's definitely looking good. good. The PL's still looking better. PL has a full Diffusal Blade with the BTs and an Aegis to the Immortal 14 minutes in. And he's still got another 1200 gold up his sleeve, too. And he was mid. Like, this is the. This might be one of the most fun PLs I've ever seen in minute 14. And it's a mid where you generally get less farm than you said. He's been doing great. It helps when you get six kills for no deaths. <laughs> really a good sign. Alright, he's just gonna... Yeah, uh -oh. well, with that Aegis, how are they gonna kill him twice? It's very difficult to imagine. He's gonna put on the pressure of Hero, known for his sometimes over-aggression. It feels more like distraction. Like, so MVP can take that mid town without any, like, any problem. Secret are reading this, though. They're looking for a kill on Forev. They know he's solo tough now, after they see a couple of heroes mid and the PL, obviously, and they're gonna go in. Uh, misery. Oh, oh he, he, started, he started the roll. The Brad says you're going to keep him out, so Perez can just TP himself out. The Dr. Ulti, he comes in from Chevy, so even if Misery did see him with a hook, he can't do anything. And the BTs, well, that was actually on the way in from the PL, but the unit actually died, so he couldn't complete his BT. But the Prophet Perez comes back in for some revenge. Throws out the Wrath of Nature, bounces through Weeha. Is there a glimpse? Not available right now, and Perez can't kill Misery before the TP will complete. But meanwhile, in the middle lane, two are. He starts off at the Fusal Play charge on the Turtle Envy. He's now completely out of mana. They let the Omni Slash go as the Turtle Envy just put, well, basically disintegrates into bolts. They're looking for that oh, Sun Strike kill on QO, work. but yeah, he, uh, because of the fail of the Doppelganger, he actually stays alive. The tower can't kill him off. And now Puppy's made it to come up too high. QO! He's coming back in for a Kiki Aegis Demon. Doesn't really care that much, but it's a big kick from Dubu. He buys the space for Forever to actually get back out to safety. The Aegis Immortal will now pop, but Kuro is still not sad about that. He kind of wanted that to happen anyway. 
And now we've Phantom Rush back off the ball. That doesn't even need it. Misery is dragged back over to him. Instantly kicks down to the curb. And MVP, there's 16 3, and they are taking the Shanghai Major by storm. Uh, I don't know what to say. This is not the performance I was expecting from them going into the tournament. Uh, I also don't think this game has been Secret's best showing, so this for me is n probably not going to be an indication of how a very likely, well, not a likely MVP will have a game two no matter what, but very likely a 1 0 lead MVP will be looking in the next game. Um, I think Secret will take a lot from this game, both in terms of drafting but also their gameplay. It's, it's been very greedy and they haven't really been able to counterplay MVP very much. Mm -hmm. I guess the main way MVP have won the fight is just been outnumbering. Often in the Earth Spirit engaging from far away and they just reinforce very quickly. They kind of did get like like the greatest that they could have asked for. Like a full like level, almost a level and a half on the Invoker. Yeah. And then you catch out the Beastmaster twice. But the the Earth Spirit, like it was it was they were forced into a position. MVP kind of also seemed to draft in a way that allowed this to happen. Course of their bands, they saw Secret like having troubles in, in their first series. Uh, it was noted as well by the panel saying like they're just not feeling the secret of TNG. It was a big concern of a lot of people as well. Oh secret fans when they came into this tournament, could they actually coordinate? Could they pick themselves up from their slump? And then we saw this Wombo combo, the Enigma and the Tide Hunter just working beautifully and bringing back a meta from three years ago. Uh, and MVP just disallowed it through the first draft and allowed Secret to play this later style of game that they like. You missed that stat right there. This is actually a record. This is the first PL ever with over 19 at worth minute 15. So, he is on. They've been talking about for this. They just put out. There's a call on for this. They could actually set up something. Yeah, that only slash though. It went in so deep from MP. Took a lot of life off MV. And because of that, Seeker already backing up. So they couldn't capitalize on that big call down. And they go back in again. Eternal turn on MV. Down to the counter. Great all the out from Febby. There's just nowhere to go. They turn on the Magnetize. The double buybacks are coming out from Secret. But what have they really taken off MVP? They're taking nothing, and MVP takes the game in under 18 and a half minutes. They get the GG call out. MVP, not only have they trashed E-Home, they have now walked over Secret with 422. We're one off the genius mark, but oh my, MVP playing brilliantly. Oh yeah, that was so solid. And I think, you know, we talked a bit about the mid lane. He'll get the first blood, he gets the bounty rune, so obviously a big advantage. But I also think it's in this metagame.